guys, Ash here again at Flight Sim Reviews, and today we're going to be looking at the Carinado Cessna 337 Skymaster and the interior portion of this review. Uh, this is just a, again, just a general aviation aircraft, and of course nothing wrong with that. Uh, GA aircraft are what they make, make the world go around. So, uh, that being said, let, let's get started. Let's just start from the left as well. Uh, there's a window here on the uh, Skymaster that can be opened and closed, uh, which was a nice touch by Carinado, and uh, it does latch back shut when you uh, close it. Uh, also, if you go ahead and open the doors, there's a uh, full unlock and opening animation that uh, comes with that, so uh, that was kind of a nice touch by Carinado. Uh, going back to the uh, cockpit, here. Uh, you have uh, a gauge that's telling you if your forward and rear uh, prop RPM are synced. Uh, uh, that's something you would possibly want to know in cruise. Uh, just a standard clock, a turn coordinator, uh, airspeed with your flap extension ranges, and uh, minimum climb rate line here if you lose an engine. Uh, this is an electronic gauge that will give you your uh, not only your exhaust gas temperature for leaning purposes, but your cylinder head temperatures. Uh, so you can keep an eye on those in case you need to open up your cow flaps. Uh, of course you have your artificial horizon. Uh, it has a flight director function to use with the uh, GPS over here. We'll get to that. Uh, of course your uh, gyroscopic compass here. Uh, distance measuring equipment. Uh, it's a Bendix King model. It can do both the nav 1 and nav 2 uh, setting and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the battery so you can see what that looks like uh, again you, you have a standard uh, altimeter uh, of course you can adjust your barometric pressure to field with that uh, VSI or vertical speed indicator uh, just all pretty standard stuff here uh, backup uh, ADF gate uh, instrument here and uh, backup VOR. Uh, going down of course you have your master battery switch, uh, front and rear alternators, front and rear backup high and low pressure fuel pumps, uh, pedo heat, uh, if you were in icing conditions of course you would need that. Uh, you don't want to fly this plane into icing but if you did start to lose your pedo static system uh, you could uh, in theory turn this on if it was a block static port, you go ahead and pull the static. But anyways, uh, de-ice the, the light on the wing to see if you are having icing. Nav, strobe, beacon, taxi, and landing lights. Also, you can toggle the uh, yoke on and off. And uh, it is very uh, fluid moving. It looks really nice. Uh, of course, your Hobbs meter uh, for how many hours on the aircraft. Uh, ignition switches. This is showing us which batteries are currently discharging. Uh, these are your instrument lights. And uh, just so you can look at that, it's a little bright because uh, I have it set to dawn in FSX, but uh, the instrument lights look really, really good. Uh, we'll go ahead and shut those down. Cow flaps for the engine cooling, landing gear handle, uh, trim wheel elevator. Uh, of course, your autopilot mode selector. Uh, coming back to the uh, electronic EGT gauge, you can see that the uh, it's reading currently uh, cylinder head temperature uh, EGT. Uh, the EGT, of course, is uh, the atmospheric temperature here because the engines aren't started. The turbine. Or, I'm sorry, the the engine, the piston engine, I like homing. Anyways, uh, of course, you have your uh, speaker control for what you're listening to in your headset. Uh, if you want to hear VHF one, two nav for your uh, Morse code on your VORs, marker uh, for your uh, approach, outer, middle, inner marker, you can go ahead and make that louder or quieter. Uh, this is a Garmin 530. Uh, this plane is compatible with the Reality XP series of uh, uh, Garmin. Uh, it, it's an add-on that you can get uh, to really make this an accurate 530 unit. Uh, of course, uh, another comm radio as a backup to the comm radio in the Garmin, uh, backup nav radio as a backup uh, nav radio in the Garmin. Uh, this appears to be the stock 
factory uh, ADF radio uh, from standard FSX as the knobs don't work. Uh, you, if you want to change the numbers, you're going to have to just hold over them and roll your mouse wheel or click, whereas these, your knobs work appropriately, and you can turn them on and off. Uh, here is your transponder, of course, uh, set to 1200 or VFR. And uh, it's pretty nice because you can put it on standby and warm it up on. Uh, and there's an altitude reporting mode, of course. It's uh, mode C. So anyways, it's identing there. It was a nice touch that it does flash that uh, the ident's occurring. Uh, manifold pressure uh, on the engines. Fuel flow. You're going to watch fuel flow for uh, absolute maximum power settings on climb or cruise. And, of course, your prop RPM. Uh, over here you have your fuel gauges, your oil pressure, uh, cylinder head temperatures, and oil temperatures. Uh, they put in a nice little placard here that uh, explains you want to lead with the rear engine with your thrust just to make sure that it hasn't failed and that it is still uh, up to speed. That's the idea behind that. Uh, a backup altimeter and a backup uh, analog exhaust gas temperature gauge to, uh, of course, back up the digital one. Uh, also, you have your uh, emergency locator beacon uh, system here. You can turn it on in case you needed it and it hadn't turned on in the event of a crash. They do have G meters in them and will automatically turn on in a crash or if, you have, if you're a student pilot and you land the aircraft too hard, sometimes they will flip on. So, uh, uh, Anyways, I've never had that occur in my flight training, but uh, I have heard stories. So anyways, suction gauge for the pedostatic system, uh, the engines. Uh, it's fine with uh, one engine running. It's still got plenty of suction. Uh, of course, your flaps switch, uh, and then cabin heat. And it was nice, of course, that uh, they made these work. There's a little animation that comes with them. Uh, just another nice touch, uh, of course. The, this is a sim and you're not going to feel the heat but uh, just a tight, nice touch uh, pro synchronization uh, this is a face switch for it uh, hey look at that guys that, that's, that, that's a good thing for the uh, sim to show you uh, the batteries officially just conked out from the uh, uh, battery being on without the engines nice touch there you know from Carinato and the ident light's still flashing but you can see it's very dim uh, that's a really nice touch uh, anyways, of course, you have your throttles, your uh, prop pitch, and your mixture knobs. Uh, and uh, this aircraft doesn't have a uh, MCP or an autopilot that you can program your altitude or such into. Uh, you use this wheel to uh, tell the autopilot to uh, go up or down, uh, to pitch your nose for climb and then roll. Uh, you can give it some instructions that way. Uh, the rudder pedals look nice uh, in action, and I just give you a, a quick look around the cabin. Of course, you have your uh, magnetic compass that you'll, of course, match your uh, gyroscopic compass to when you start up. And then you have uh, outside air temperature, Celsius and Fahrenheit. That does work. Uh, of course, your front and rear uh, fuel selectors, uh, your visors, or your sun visors here. And uh, another nice touch is that the uh, cockpit light does work when you click the switch, the uh, interior light. Uh, again, just another nice touch. So anyways, uh, you can look around the cabin. The seats look nice. They've got a nice amount of wear on the seat belts. Uh, again, just a really nice looking uh, cabin. Uh, nice touch that so you have the airworthiness certificate. They're stuck in the side, as you would with a normal airplane. Uh, anyways, guys, I hope that gave you a good look at the interior of the Carinado uh, Cessna 337 Skymaster. Uh, it really is a nice plane. I'm really impressed with it uh, so far. Uh, next, we'll start her up uh, and uh, take off, and uh, I'll talk to you guys then. I appreciate uh, you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them below. Uh, subscribe. Uh, this is the first of a lot of reviews I'll be doing. And uh, I appreciate your support. Thanks, guys, and I hope you stay tuned for more flights and reviews.